Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is for trading on Tuesday, May the 10th, 2016. This is a midday snapshot, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at uh, crude oil futures. You can see right now the market is strongly supported at the $33.72 handle, uh, which will carry it out uh, for the rest of the week. We don't see this market pulling back uh, any more than the trend line support purple line here at 39.76. I think this market wants to break out beyond 50 and above and continue to track from there. Momentum here is leveled out a bit, but the market is still in an overall bullish stance. Uh, and it's trying to get a close above the trend line resistance, which is at 44.51. So a close this week above 44.51 would set the stage for higher prices uh, going into next week. Taking a look now at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has uh, powered up a bit. As you can see, if we bounced off this uh, support low uh, from last week's um, Fed intervention into the U.S. dollar, uh, you can look forward to the Fed continuing to operate in the U.S. dollar. They need to keep the dollar strong. They need to keep oil as cheap as possible, and they need to crush the precious metals and put money behind the bond market continuously in order to keep the house of cards going for the next couple of months, at least until the election if possible. But they are losing control and losing their power uh, overall in these markets. I'll be doing some uh, videos on that. Uh, in the days to come but for right now just want to look at the technicals uh, right now we have upward resistance at 95.19 a break above 95.15 will put this market in play to get back up to the 98 handle and then a retest of par at 100 right now this market has no support alright you're in free fall from back here so the only real support we have looking at it right now is going to be last week's low at 91.88 a break below 91.88 puts you well into the 80s. A break above 95.19, we start marching back toward 100. All right, taking a look now at gold. In our gold futures, we have strong support for the week at 1236.80. We need to uh, stay above that. If that is broken, then the market quickly goes to the trend line support. Uh, areas of 1222 and 1186 90 respectively that is right here 1186.90. a break below that we have no more support until we get all the way back down to the 1045.70 right here and that is our gold market all right looking ahead now at silver silver strongly supported at sixteen dollars and one cent remember I said that sixteen dollar support was going to try to play out so I see the market trying to get close to that and test that as long as the market can stay above 1601 the market should be strongly supported for another test of a leg up if not 1601 is taken out we have no support until we get back down to 1350 so the market will be wide open especially if it drops below the Kumo cloud here and momentum is negative and pointing down all right, taking a look here at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is getting dangerously close to a negative pulse wave situation. The weak support is at 42.53 and a half. If 42.53 and a half is taken out, this market will crash and we have no support. We have no support. It's in free fall at that point and we're looking at a possible 2 to 400 point move to the downside if the support is broken in the NASDAQ. What I think they want to try to do, if they can do it, is to try to get back up and push toward 46, but that's that's gonna end if we can't stay above 42.53. And that's about 100 and some points away from where the market's trading it now. So momentum's good for right now. So we'll see if this can keep going or not. Okay, switching our focus now to the Dow. The Dow has support at 17,042. And right now, this market is trying to power up and break the 18,000 handle, which is up here. And it looks like it's trying to definitely do that. It looks like this one is the stronger of the group so far. And 18,000 seems to be in play now uh, in the Dow. 
However, if the 17,042 is taken out, we have no more support, and this market too will be in free fall. But right now, momentum is pointing up, so I believe the 18,000 will be in play. Switching focus now to the Russell. The Russell is dangerously close, like the NASDAQ, uh, falling off the cliff. Support is at 1088.80 right now in the Russell. A break below that, and this market too will be in free fall, falling uh, as low as back down to the previous low of 936.20. And then that's all she wrote. So we'll see if this market can try to power up and move in unison with the Dow. But right now, it's tough to say. Momentum is pointing up, but we have this overhead resistance, the bottom of the Kumo cloud, which is really making it tough for the Russell to get its legs. Switching our focus now to Apple. Apple is pulse waving. All right, it's a down wave. It is now pulse waving. Um, support was broken back here at 9871, and currently we're at 9322. So we're still in the negative pulse wave and we are in the oversold and it looks like it's trying to lock in and just continue to trend lower not a lot of volume or open interest right now per se not a lot of market action um, we have fallen trend lines here resistance is getting lower I don't see a lot to do there uh, basically upside resistance right now is back at 110.78 I see this coming down as this market moves lower. So my my foreshadowing would say that this is this has some more downside, much more downside to go. Especially that this it's this is now going into you know the third week and we have no retracement whatsoever off this prior low here. We're still there, hanging out there. No retracement. At least a 50% retracement right now will put us back around 98.33, and that resistance is a strong resistance by itself. So I don't know. Uh, I say this market is still weak. I don't see any recovery happening here, unless people decide they have fallen in love with the apple again. They want to bid it up, but right now, uh, it's it's under liquidation and distribution. All right, looking at Google. Google's strong. Uh, its support is at 669.34. Uh, we don't want to see that taken out because if that's taken out, then this puts itself in free fall, headed toward 550 in a fast way. But right now, this market wants to continue to move higher and get back up toward the $800 mark. Right now, it's pulse waving and, and it's moving positive. Momentum's pointing higher, nowhere near overbought yet. So this one has a, an upside way to go yet. So it's still looking strong. Facebook is still powerful as well. It wants to try to take out that 120.79. Don't know how much more higher it's going to try to go, but right now it's strongly supported at 103.77. As long as it can stay above that, it's looking good. Uh, next, first first line of support is at 115.88. Second line of support is going to be at 110.10, and then our third level of support is going to be at $100.22. So this blue uh, support line purple support line, orange support line respectively. Looking good right now. Overbought, but looks like it may be trying to lock in and take off higher. So this is one to watch. All right, looking here at Amazon, the talk of the town. Some analysts are calling for $1,000 Amazon. You know what happens when these stocks get overpriced, they start doing splits. Reverse splits, negative splits, splits and tops of splits, banana splits. You know it, they split. So, <laughs> any way you put it, it's it's powerful. It can't be denied. It's it's breaking away here, gapping up. What can you do? Overbought, but trying to lock in a trend here. And this one looks to go much, much higher. As long as the 563.14 support holds, this market's good to go. And this one has a first line of support, 649.78. 607.99 and 553.74 respectively here here and here so this one's also another one to watch all right looking at Netflix Netflix has overhead resistance is 111.38 um, 
I don't see that coming into play anytime soon, not with it trading at 91.74. This market is pulse waving. It's pulse waving down. So it's in a downtrend channel, negative pulse wave. Trying to come out of that oversold area here. Trying to lift up a little bit. But I'm afraid it's going to bump its head against the first line of resistance of 94.60. Next level is going to be at 96.95 and 99.12. So that's right up right up in here before it even tries to get up to the 111.38 so this market has much lower to go right now uh, I would say supports gonna be about eighty dollars a break below eighty dollars would set up the next leg down and also add powerful momentum uh, to this stock so right now it's in it's it's in trouble it's it's negatively pulse waving so it's bearish right now on the Netflix all right, looking at your sugar market, everyone's been talking about. All right, this one is supported at 1472. It is pulse waving positively right now. Uh, momentum's come off a bit, kind of flat, not overbought, not oversold. It's neutral. It could pop up or down. Anyone's guess here is uh, viable, but it's in an uptrend. It's moving higher for sure. Uh, my guess is that it wants to keep going, trying to get back up to 17 and beyond but if it breaks that 1472 look out below because you're headed to 12 and 11 and 10 with no problem free fall would happen in this one all right looking at the coffee market um, it's overall still asleep but it's trying to do something here it's trying to wake up broke out uh, from the 12243 handle got as high as 136.40 pulled all the way back it's in a negative pulse wave position right now with no follow through trying to reverse right now 136.05 is in play that 136 levels taken out it could probably shoot to 150 160 170 easily up here coffee when it's alive and well can be a violent market it's a very thinly traded market but it can get up and go it can move like the stock market of the 90s so if you're gonna play this one you gotta keep your eyes and ears open and know about the freaky trading hours and all that and uh, keep a close eye on it because if it gets away from you it can be violent it can be massive so watch out for coffee it is prone to violent outbursts up and down all right historically speaking if you're new and you've never seen it before take my word for it keep your eyes and ears open on this one all right here is the soybean market as you can see it's taking off it's lifting off just be careful when you're trading some of these commodities they have limits uh, you don't want to get stuck on the wrong side of a lock limit move. If you do, it can be curtains for you. Historically speaking, grain markets are wonderful to trade, very well supported with liquidity and open interest and volume. You can get in and out quickly, easily, no problem. But just understand when these grain reports come out and stuff, it can blow your head off. It can rip your face completely off to the white meat if you are not careful all right it can lock limit on you it can lock limit for days all right if you don't know anything about lock limits you're going to want to read up on it because each day a market locks limit it expands its limit for the next trading session so if three points is the limit for this market today it could be six or six and a half or seven points tomorrow all right and for those of you who want to play in the big boy commodity markets be very mindful some of these futures contracts have lock limit moves and some of these historically are incredibly violent apocalyptic type markets need I remind the old timers that listen to this channel about pork bellies a few years ago that uh, got delisted from most most brokerages that won't allow you to trade it no more because if you remember a, a few summers ago that market went lock limit up every day for the entire summer can you imagine the millions of dollars someone was probably faced with deficit 
and then by the time the thing uh, reversed, it reversed almost instantly. It was almost like a, like 30 days or something like that, 60 days, where it totally reversed as if nothing happened after going lock limit up every day for all summer. It was ridiculous. It was incredible. So yes, the, these these are your bankruptcy markets. All right, be careful because they can bankrupt you quickly if they lock on you and then you can't get out of the market. You can't unwind your position. It's impossible. So just understand that. Play these, but play them close, play them smart, so you don't get hurt. All right. And as you can see, this thing is locked in. This uptrend is locked in. It's done. It's bullish now. It's trading above the Kumo cloud and it's waiting for the trend lines to follow suit. You're getting a cross right here. Nice golden cross right here. Once it crosses up and out of the, out of this Kumo cloud, it's going to lift these markets to new heights. And it's looking, it wants to go to $12, $12. So beans in the teens for the summer is looking like it's in play. Um, it's, it is looking very sexy right now. We're looking very tempting to get involved. Uh, you probably want to wait for a pullback, you know, and uh, just be careful. Uh, this market is about to break $11 right now. Um, this market right now, as I'm doing this video, uh, it's up 63 points. Okay. Soybeans moves like the S&P 500. This is a soybean chart. It moves like the S&P 500, so it's $50 a point. So this is the equivalent of so, of uh, the S&P being up 63 points right now. All right, this is this is this is a this is not a uh, a game for for children. This is not a, a kids market. This is a big boys market. All right, when when these grains wake up, they can be explosive. So this is all um, USDA related today. So that's why you have this, and um, just understand. <clears throat> once these commodity markets wake up, it might be monst monstrous, and it could be fore foretelling. Um, the dollar index, as I showed you, is at uh, it was at 94 and a quarter right now. Okay, and it's powering up, or at least trying to, because the government's intervening. But yet your commodities are popping with it. That's that could be a little scary. That could be telling us that something's around the corner that that you know government's not going to be able to hold on to this much longer. I said I was going to make make some videos, a series of videos on that. But for right now, this video is getting long in the tooth, so I'm about to, to cut it here. But I just wanted to show you um, what's what's been happening. Now uh, let me show you one more here. This is your live cattle right here. See the live cattle is in a bear market. It's struggling. It's it's collapsing in price. It's it's uh, trending down negatively, pulse waving. All right, here's the feeder cattle. Feeder cattle usually trends a lot better than the live cattle, but you can see it's negatively pulse waving too, downtrend channel, trying to reverse off the lows. On this one, the 159.61 is in play. And a break above that will put us to the trend line resistance at 172.76. And then we have our error pocket between the trend line and the bottom of the Kumo cloud. But because this is this is pointing down like this, probably going to smack the price down even if it does get up to that, barring some other event, like a shortage or something like that. If supply and demand gets out of whack, it could push it higher up back to 220, but I doubt it. Right now, this is where we are. But we do have to watch the 159 because if that triggers, then we could get action like we did here. And um, before, you know, it did it did break out and rally a little bit before pulling back down again. So something that needs to be watched. I think rallies are going to be sold in this market. So anyhow, I uh, just wanted to encourage you. Just remember, um, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. Remember to take what you can and give nothing.